May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our heart be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Last week, Jesus called us salt of the earth and light of the world in his, from his Sermon on the Mount. And today he talks about some of the commandments and some very challenging thoughts around adultery and divorce that come very much from the context Jesus lived in 2,000 years ago. A world where married women were very much dependent upon a husband for status and security in a patriarchal Middle Eastern society. A world where many women were abused and oppressed by the law. Jesus sees that some marriages lead to pain and suffering instead of love and support. Jesus has compassion on those who find themselves in such situations and reaches out in love to them. Jesus hopes for pathways for human flourishing where adultery and divorce don't happen and that women find the love and support they deserve within their marriage. Jesus believes in possibilities for our future that lift us up and do not burden or oppress us. Jesus calls out the pain and suffering he sees and asks society to do better in following the law of Moses. Having said all that, in this sermon, Paul's epistle is my focus. And it is a different aspect of the law of Moses. It's about growing in faith and whom we follow when we come together in a faith community. The law of the Old Testament requires us to love God and to love each other. In Paul's letter, he gives advice to the Corinthians that is almost as tough as Jesus' message in Matthew. Paul is not seeing much love in that community and definitely not enough love for Jesus. He wants divisions to end. He wants jealousy and quarreling to end. He wants the humanity of this church to give way to more divinity. More Jesus is definitely needed in Corinth. As an apostle of Christ, some 20 years after Jesus' death, Paul would have been very familiar with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, in particular the imagery Jesus used around salt and light. However, Paul uses different imagery in this passage. Paul says, we are God's field and God's building. It's interesting that he uses a field and a building as an image for us. Nobody can work a field on their own. Nobody can construct or maintain a building on their own. These are tasks which take a community. Both field and building need people of different skills and talents to come together and to do their best work on the project. Both field and building need a community to tend and make them. They need a community to create and use those spaces to make them prosper and support the community. A field can be transformed into something that grows food to sustain and nourish the community. A building can shelter and house people of a family and community. It can be a place of worship and connection. Both a field and a building bring people together. And Paul believes that we all need to be part of that work and that we are that work. Paul says that he and Apollos and everyone working in that early church in Corinth is there to serve that community and to serve God. Paul asks them to stop identifying themselves as followers of Paul who planted the church or Apollos who watered it, encouraging it to grow after Paul moved on to other ministry in the region. The planter and the waterer are definitely important, that's a given. However, Paul reminds the Corinthians that nothing would happen if not for God. God gives the growth, and God is working through Paul and Apollos in order to bring faith in Jesus to the people. Paul and Apollos are nurturing what God has placed in the hearts of the people, that faith that grows and grows in all God's people to transform them into deeper relationship with God and wanting to become more like God's Son, Jesus Christ, walking in his ways and delighting in his will, as we say each Sunday in the Confession. Paul says the Corinthian, asks the Corinthians to focus on identifying with Jesus, the source of their faith. Paul would like to see the Corinthians mature in faith and graduate from milk to solid food. They may still be baby Christians, but they need to grow into the next step of their faith journey. Paul wants the Corinthians to experience the grace of God as he has done. In Paul's dramatic conversion experience, he very much felt God's grace and the Holy Spirit and it changed his life. He went from persecuting early Christian believers to becoming an incredible apostle and evangelist for Jesus, who traveled to Corinth and other cities in the Mediterranean world to spread the gospel. 
Paul tells us that it is the Holy Spirit and God's grace that enables us to know God. Paul and Apollos and other missionaries try their best to impart God's knowledge and word and share their faith. But it takes God to know God. It takes the Holy Spirit to allow us to know God and to know God's Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit helps us to recognize truthfully what God has done, is doing, and will continue to do for us. Paul is telling us that the Spirit is in us and God's grace is upon us. Paul is telling the Corinthians that they belong to God. They don't belong to Paul or Paulus or any other church leader. They are God's and God's alone. And that message is directed to us as well. Knowing that we belong to God is both a humbling and empowering experience. Paul preaches and teaches about the Christ who was crucified for us because of his love for us and his desire to free us from our sins. Paul preaches about a resurrected Christ who gives us hope and new life. Through Jesus' death on the cross, we are given eternal life in our own death and resurrection. In Jesus, we become divine. And Jesus Christ is a savior, a reconciler, and he connects to our human woundedness and reminds us we are loved through and through by God. Jesus tells us that in the acts of repentance and forgiveness, we are freed from our sins. In this passage, Paul offers up a vision for the church. We are co-laborers, working together to cultivate the church. We participate in a common task of building up God's church together. We collaborate in this ministry together and with God. When we put our faith into action, really live our faith, then we are really starting to get ready for solid food. When we serve each other in our wider community, we are showing signs that we have internalized, digested, and reflected on what is required of us to live a cross-shaped life. When we show signs of the Holy Spirit within us, we are demonstrating that we are ready for solid food. By acting, thinking, and loving like Jesus, we show that the Holy Spirit is working and active in us. When we help the poor, love our neighbors as ourselves, forgive our enemies, bring healing into our relationships, we are living like Jesus. When the Spirit is in us, we are capable of Christ-like actions, which help us to live a life like his. It's not an easy brief that Paul is offering us here today, and we will fail at it. But with God's hope and encouragement, we can keep trying and changing and growing, becoming more and more what God envisions for us, realizing our holy potential, becoming who God has created us to be. And God never gives up on us. God sticks with us. God is always calling us to transform our lives, to explore our gifts, to offer God the best that is in us. And through God's empowering spirit, the gospel of Christ becomes real for the people who need to hear the good news of God's saving grace. The life of faith is a life of change, not all of it on some predetermined or predictable path. And the force behind this particular sort of change isn't ourselves or our human leaders or the uncontrollable circumstances of our lives. It's God. God takes us where we need to be and gives us the courage and hope we need to travel this journey of faith and live it out to glorify God in all we do. We are called to grow, and God makes it happen. Amen.